All right, well, on today's agenda, I figured I'd go play with some tractors. And uh, the two that I'm going to be working with is this, uh, the freebie that a friend of mine called me on, which was a um, old Murray with a 15-horse uh, Briggs on it, and missing a mower deck and some other stuff. And uh, the other one is the $20 yard sale find, which was the Craftsman uh, with a 42-inch deck, which looks pretty much complete other than the motor's locked up. And as far as what the owner told me, um, everything was working fine until the motor locked up. So that needs an engine. This has an engine that uh, more than likely can get transferred over to that. But I don't have any history on this. So it could be uh, totally fine or it could be a total piece of trash. So I figure I'd take a little bit of time and we'll go through this one and we'll see if it um, merits um, doing the swap. So without further ado, I figure we'll go grab some stuff. One of them is going to be my jumper pack and we'll throw some power to the starter and we're just going to listen to it first before we do anything. So this is bypassing all the safeties, just putting power right to the starter. I use my little switch on the thing here. Actually sounds pretty good. Uh, hmm, got oil in it. Might be a little over full. But that's okay. Uh, don't know what it's still got hooked up for safeties. And we'll turn the key to on. Probably put the should be able to run with the seat off if we put the emergency brake on. So where's the lock for that? Should be a latch somewhere that you lift up. There it is. All right, lock that down. It's a lever on that side. Hmm. I think I got it. No. Well, you guys don't need to see me futz with that. Let me go and uh, get that set up and we'll get a little bit of gas and uh, we'll try it again. And see if it fires up by putting a little bit of gas down the carb. Right, so I got the brake locked down. I got a little bottle of gas and I popped the air cleaner off. I haven't checked for spark or anything, but I just figure I mean, we'll just take a shortcut and Dump a little bit of fuel in there. And we'll give that a shot. Probably turn it off of choke. Alright, keys in the on position. <laughs> yeah. Alright, well that's a good sign. I think. <laughs> it's got a bunch of debris kicking out of it, so you know it's got nests inside it. There. And as usual, there's another one in there. So some critters are living inside there. So what I'm gonna probably go do now, we know it's already got spark, is um it's a gas in it. Actually I think there is gas in it. That's the reason why they did not take it. Yes, yeah, it's got a full tank of gas in it. Hmm. Try priming it again. And uh, we'll leave it with the choke on. We'll see if it'll actually just suck itself right through and start itself up. Choke on. Yeah, so it's not getting any fuel, or the fuel or the carb is crappy. Go for one more time. Okay. So, anyway, not going to run as it is. It needs some addressing, but you definitely can go forward because it does seem like it's a good motor. Uh, we want to go check. Maybe it's got a little too much oil in it. We're going to go check the uh, the carb. We'll pull the float off. We'll look at see what's inside there. More than likely, it's a bunch of water. Hopefully, it's just water. And while I'm waiting, I'm going to throw the battery. It's still got a battery in it. All 
And we'll throw a battery on the battery charger. Got a date on it. The two can pull the way. It's either a three or a four. So I would say it's either 13 or 14. So I would say the, the battery's yeah, three or four years old. May or may not come back, but still a charger on that. We'll see what we get from that too. So let me uh, regroup and I'll turn you back on. Okay, so I got the battery on the battery charger and uh, took the hardware out of the fan shroud. If we were to go pop that up and it's always a good surprise to see what we get, pretty wise. Yeah, that one's packed in there pretty good too, huh? You even had a little nest kind of going in the center there. I think I may have evicted him. Yeah. That's where his house was right there. Well, I don't see ground up body parts. That's a good sign. So uh, we're, I'm going to go get my big air hose and uh, put a mask on. And uh, we'll go evacuate this section of it. I got a little piece of paper down the weep hole to get there too. Of course you're not going to fit. Of course you're not. Right, there we go. Let's go out blow that crap out of there and uh, get us a little closer to home and then we'll get the fuel system opened up there and we'll see what's kind of going on inside. So it's all blown out and uh, again we're getting ready to go in and see what we got. So I want to get into the fuel system. Well, I'm going to check first. I'm going to turn the key on and this is the solenoid. You guys hear that? Just wanted to make sure that that solenoid was firing, which it is. If that doesn't fire, it won't allow any fuel to go into the motor. What I have is a, I took a, um, a half inch wrench and uh, it's ground down real, real fine, the thickness of it. And it allows you to get in there to get these cylinders, these um, solenoids rather, off without damaging them. Oh, my favorite. Nothing but straight water, so that obviously was not going to run. Run on that. That's where we at. Seems to be the the norm rather than the exception around here. That flute still turns. So I'm gonna go see if um, I can get some fuel to prime through that. Pop the vice grips off. And, Look at it go. <laughs> Pull the float. Pull the float right out of there. Right, it's got no needle and seat in it at all. I'm gonna grab an air gun. I'm just gonna do it the old way, I'm just gonna blow right into the uh, gas cap if I can. Can't get a conceal on it. So watch out that fitting's plastic on the end there. You don't wanna you don't want to abuse that guy too much. There it goes. <laughs> it opened up its own little peepee hole anyway. That yeah, should be running to the point where it's got gas in it. Yeah, I'm gonna go and uh, we'll clean that cup back out. And it'll be one of two things. We're either gonna get straight water that's pouring through there, or it's gonna be gas. But I can't tell you by looking at that, now, can I? So, and uh, I gotta go clean up the jets. All right, let me do some cleaning. So I decided to relocate to the garage and make myself a little bit more comfortable. Get up and uh, be able to sit on a seat and do a little eye level. You see that carb's been uh, cleaned up and then I took the bowl and ran that in the sandblaster and uh, knocked off all that heavy crap on the inside. 
and uh, cleaned out the cup. The cup, and uh, just let fuel run through it. As you can see, it's yellow, so it's got age to it. Generally, it should be almost clear. But I'm just looking for at the very bottom for a puddle, if you would see on, on the bottom of the fuel. Um, you know, dissimilar material, that'd be water. It goes right to the bottom, so I just want to make sure that no more water was going to be coming out of the fuel tank, and uh, that looks to be okay. And again, we're not uh, setting this up for this tractor to be uh, put back together. We're just trying to get ourselves a good engine out of this process. So I'm going to uh, button the float bowl back up, and uh, we'll see if this thing fires up and runs off the carb, and that everything's okay with it before we uh, yank it off the frame. I said carbs all back together and uh, re uh, hooked up the jumper pack. Jumper pack because the battery still has not taken enough charge for it to do anything. It kind of that's where we are right now. So we're just going to put it to a uh, on state and we use the jumper pack to turn the starter. And I think no, we're not up at choke yet. There you go, run that at choke. Keep that fires up and goes from there. Vice grips are off, power's on. Should hear it click. That allows the fuel in. Yeah, let's try it without the choke. Hmm. Hmm, I say. Guy's getting dizzy. That's what I get for putting the fuel away. Alright, let's give her. See if we're, we're starving for fuel or we're lost spark. And a little bit of fuel. I did not pull that carb all the way and blow those jets out. I just stuck the air gun underneath there, so that may be the issue. And that would be the issue. That's what you get for trying to cut corners. All right. So I gotta pull that carb and uh, pull the passage because apparently the uh, fuel is not getting drawn up. So uh, let me tear it back apart. Okay, so I dug in. That's the main jet that goes up the center of that carb. And I shot air through the bottom. And I don't know if you can see it or not. But anyway, there's a hole. There's a hole through the center of that. Blew that through, that seemed to be okay. But the one thing you're not seeing is there's little holes in the side of it. And those little holes are all still clogged. So that's why the jet had to come out and uh, get purged. You see that? You guys, I don't know if it's focused or not. Probably not. See that? Yeah, man. Those guys, those guys need to be blown out. So that's why it's not drawing fuel up the center of it. And uh, just for uh, reference, that little electric jet solenoid, rather, I keep calling it a jet. So what its job is, you kind of see that it's it's spring loaded. You put power to it, it draws itself down. So what that does, that actually lines up to the bottom that guy and it allows it so that no fuel can get drawn up the carburetor when there's no power to that so when you turn the key off it shuts the fuel off right away and, uh, yeah. a, a couple of things it does one is it just keeps it from uh, loading up the exhaust a lot of times you shut it off it's full throttle and you're shutting it off so then all that fuel goes into the muffler and sometimes it ignites itself and makes that big bang sound when you're shutting it off so education so let me go get that cleaned out we'll get that put back up in there and we'll see if it uh, recovers and stays running we give it one more shot it's all back together key yeah starter almost went through Ooh. teeth are bad on that that's gonna need a start a year but uh don't worry about that at the moment we'll see if she kind of fires over
Choke's not on. Choke's on now. See it blowing fuel out of the uh, the carburetor. Does not want to play well with others. to run the choke on so it definitely still has some carb issues with it but um, as far as the engine is concerned the engine seems like it's a decent engine I'm not gonna worry too much about that carb because this may be the same one that's the same carb so what I'll do is I'll pull the bowl off of this one we'll take a look on the inside of this this one may be perfectly fine because it uh, failed doing to the, due to the fact that the motor blew up not that the uh, Thing sat for a long period of time so I think between the two of them will be good so uh, I'm not quite sure where I'm going with this I think we'll let the smoke clear out of the garage a little bit but uh, we'll uh, probably start pulling that motor off get it ready to go on the other one hey so it's the next day and uh, I let it sit on the battery charger overnight on low on two amp trickle charge and we should see all right so that battery will be uh, uh, should be recovered enough to where uh, it'll be functional in the other tractor. And I think we're we're gonna attempt to go do now is extract this motor from this tractor because this tractor has essentially no value to it other than maybe a kid's go-kart because it does not have a mower deck and uh, it's not a, a very desired uh, tractor in the first place being the, what it is. But the Craftsman uh, seem to uh, be well liked and kind of easy to get parts for and all. So the idea is to resurrect that tractor with a blown motor. So uh, without further ado, I am going to uh, strip the hood off of this, or strip the exhaust off and everything, and uh, get down to a, uh, a long block that could swap over. Well, the motor's out of that one. So we're halfway there, I guess. And uh, let's just say it didn't go without a fight. And uh, the biggest problem was on the crank. I'm trying to get the pulley off the crank underneath. So I had to go take the belt guide off and uh, torch the bottom half of the pulley off and you're asking why. Why? Because somebody else was in there before me and the nut that was uh, up inside there that someone rounded off the head. So whether it was put together from the factory that way and somebody screwed it up or somebody changed the, the bell pulley and stuck it up in there and then rounded off the edge. Uh, either event it made me had to do some little bit of surgery to get to it. But I was able to do that without damaging the motor, so that's a good thing. And uh, also yanked off the starter and the exhaust because neither one of those are going to be used on the uh, the new setup. And the new setup being this tractor, and it's uh, a little later style. You can tell the tins are are shaped a little different. Uh, but I think I've done this once before, and everything seemed to transfer over. Uh, if not, we're going to make it so it transfers over one way or another, as long as the pulley matches up to the bottom of it. So I get to do the same with this one all over again. And I get it all everything off of this and uh, we'll get her down to a, a naked frame and compare everything and uh, we'll go from there. So that's the oil, the amount of oil. Oh, it was dark. You see that pan is pretty full. That's the amount of oil that came out of the uh, the good engine. And uh, Show you how much oil has come out of a bad engine, and that's uh, getting to the point where it's almost trickling to a stop. So I would say it pretty much had an oil in it, so what's a, whatsoever, and uh, that may be a good reason why it blew up. You know, good old maintenance. I took that top cover off, so when it's more roundy shaped, and it has the same cover pretty much underneath it. So this is just more of a dummy cover that goes on top. And what I'm getting at is the, the two engines, although they looked a little dissimilar, are actually the same. So uh, we should be okay. So there's my two motors 
kind kind of side by side. Can you see a uh, issue with that one? Seems to be a common theme around my parts. The last thing to be left on the plane will be a cockroach. I think the last thing on the plane is going to be the uh, the rat's uh, little sister, the mouse there. Anyway. Uh, everything looks pretty much the same. The fan cover looks a little different in the top of the fan, but essentially they are, they are the exact same engine as far as what I'm seeing right now. And uh, that's pretty much what I figured. So the only thing I'm going to go with is the tins that were on the uh, Craftsman that it came with, which is that one right there. And uh, it has this one underneath it. So while it's off, I figured I'd swap some of that stuff around. And uh, again, the, the fan I could probably deal with when it's up in the air but pretty much i'm going to uh, punch it back into the hole that it came out of bolt it up and uh do the uh, assembly here just because it actually makes a uh, a nice workbench to uh, work on it's not like it's uh too much um not too much impedes on what you're trying to work around so i'll uh, pop it back up in there as far as changing the carb and the starter and all that kind of stuff so uh as long as that tin can go as long as that tin that came off of that motor with the new rat trap in it that is going in the new old motor that had a mouse nest or a squirrel's nest, I think was actually what was in that one. Uh, if it's over, I'll get that back up in there and we'll start to reassembling this thing. Same with the, uh, the starter motor. And uh, you see the starter gear is not much left of it. And uh, here's a replacement one. And you can kind of see uh, one end's got like a flat to it. And then the other end has a, uh, a taper, a starter, if you would. Um, so we're going to go try changing, changing this out on camera. Mm -hmm. So we got a pin lower down. So I got the right size drift pin for this. There's a pin that holds it all together. That guy right there. So we're just gonna try tapping that sucker out of there. Go on. The uh, my this drift pin's too big. And of course, the little ones are hard to find because you damage them all the time because you use them all the time and they're susceptible to snapping them off. I'm going to bring you back in a second. How's that? We're going to go tap that sucker out the other direction. It might be peened over on the one side. Or I peened it over. Or, you know. I ended up picking up the whole um, starter and setting it like this on the vise. And that gave me something much sturdier to hit on. Anyway, so that was on there like that. Took the pin out. Now that can come off. All we got to do is just get that gear right off of there. Put your new gear on. Put that guy back on. We'll line up your holes for your pins and uh, start tapping the pin back in. You could, you could pre start that pin uh, before you're in there. And uh, again, probably the same thing where I'm going to lay it down in this flat part of the vise and we're just going to uh, tap it in. I just had too much spring trying to do it over the, the uh, length of the shaft. I need a carburetor. I'm trying to figure out which one's the better one. I already got the other one off. I figure we'll take a look at this one. This is the one on the blown up motor. And we'll see what the uh, flopo looks like in here. Yeah, cleaner than the other one. Had gas in it. 
Yeah, yeah, I'll probably take that one off. It's between that one and cleaning the other one that I have. Cast mills. Between that one and cleaning this one. Hmm. Let me go and clean this one and uh, see if it comes back. It seemed like it had to run with that choke on. So I had a little bit more caca to go get. And uh, I think we're going to go and set ourselves up for some, some pine saw. Do some pine saw testing on the uh, for cleaning carbs.